the way the gallery is set up, it's the living room and the dining room of my home. So uh, the, all the furniture is gone, and, and that's where the gallery is. Um, so I have the luxury of showing what I love. Um, the fact that it's a home means there's limits to the size or scale or whatever. So it, it does get a little constrained, but I really just show what I love. And if it's painting or photography or ceramics, sculpture, whatever, I show it. Um, Seattle is small. Uh, and there's a limited audience, um, so I always knew that it would be something that was at least online, very heavy, uh, and at any opportunity would travel. It seemed like right after the election, I did an art fair in Miami, and it just felt like people were still numb from the election, which was a month prior, um, and that they weren't as free with their spending as they had been the year before. Uh, I think people are a little hesitant to purchase. Um, I think they're a little um, guarded and they're just waiting to see what happens. Um, but, you know, Seattle has Amazon, Facebook, Boeing, Microsoft. We've got everybody as far as tech is concerned and, and tech makes money, but they don't, um, not to say they, 100% of them, but a large amount of them just don't spend on luxury items in a way that I think my generation spent on luxury items. I love to travel, yeah, um, and I love to promote the artist and, and introduce him to a whole new audience uh, at the same time, so. It's, I don't know, a lot of people ask, how can you do art fairs? Because it's, they really are boring. In many ways, you're just standing here. But the return is so fantastic that it's worth it to me to get to travel, to get to meet people, to get to show the work, to get to make something happen between an artist in Boston and a collector in Germany. That's fantastic. Uh, and if I can be in between that somehow and help it, then I'm super excited.